All right, let's see. Four total damage from a 90% and an 80% follow-up to KO this guy. Retaliation is only 14 damage with 2% crit. Easy enough. Should be safe. Go get a mana. Whoa, what? 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 Wait. No. No! Games done better. Where we've realized through anime and video games that the crazier someone's hair gets, the higher their power level grows. Today, we step into the 1,000-year-old shoes of Colgate-chan, the character Nintendo is using to desperately try and get a sponsorship with Pepsi. What a main character, Nintendo. You really took the Matrix to the extreme on this one. Alright, here's a question for y'all. What's the most exciting part about an upcoming Fire Emblem game? Is it the story leaks, the prospect of an updated battle system, the new character designs? Two thumbs up for all of those choices. But you know what most Fire Emblem fans don't put much stock in anymore? The main character. Most of the time it's because their personalities are about as complex as a plastic cup, but this time around, <laughs> Wow, this is what Nintendo gave us. Like, what am I looking at right now? Who decided this was okay? Here, you know what? We decided this needs a hot fix real quick. There we go. Either one of these is way better than the Pepsi Cola Colgate protagonist they gave us. None of this goes together, y'all. Never should you drink soda and brush your teeth at the same time. Trust me. In a word, nasty. Nintendo never really has been one for subtlety, not with their story, nor their character designs. And there's no exception here. Perhaps they could have had some kind of slow buildup with hints that the main character is the child of a big baddie daddy. But nope. Let's spoil that in the first 40 seconds of the opening song. Here's how it could have been better. Tone it down. That's all you gotta do. Tone down the intense shades of hair color. Tone down the obvious spoilers. Tone down the killing of the protagonist's parents. Twice this time, y'all. Come on. Our rating for the protagonist is having the center seat of an airplane as two awkward strangers sit on both sides of you. We're in for a long ride. But anyway, let's boot this bad boy up and get into it. Ah, there it is. The pointless decision. Seriously, the turn back time because you made a dummy mistake device has been with us for about three iterations of Fire Emblem at this point, and has basically made the selection look more like this. It's time we had a talk, Turnwheel. Sit down. Tell me, why are you really here? Our best guess for why it exists still is honestly just to save time. Some of us don't have the luxury of spending 10 plus hours per play session meticulously ensuring every ally is removed from every source of danger. Let's face it, we'd make mistakes. Not a single Fire Emblem fan, no matter how cool or hardcore, can stand up and say that they've never had a unit killed off before. And honestly, it's hard not to use all the tools in your tool belt, right? You can try to flex and say that you're the hardcore Fire Emblem fan that never wants to use the turn wheel. You probably always play on hard mode and always reset the game whenever a unit dies for any reason and pound through the same dialogue and events you've already watched. Good for you. The developers know that people did this in the past. They just made a way to do it faster. Here's our thoughts and ideas on how they could have made it better. Number one, revival mechanic. Fire Emblem has never really explored the prospect of revival healing. Somehow, characters with 1 HP can swing their sword just as well as being at full HP, even though they're probably bleeding out profusely. But, as soon as someone flicks them over, they are dead forever. Here's the idea. Buff the healers. If a unit gets knocked down critical during combat, allow the healer units to be able to revive them about 3 or so turns after they've passed. It can even be a special staff that has extremely limited usage. It would make healer units way more useful, but also put them at risk in the middle of a swarm of enemies that just downed a fellow combatant. Number two, rescue mechanic. Make it so any character can rescue a fallen comrade that's been KO'd. Upon reaching and interacting with the fallen character, an ally can drag them off the battlefield to safety. However, both characters will be out of commission for the rest of the battle. We think that either of these mechanics might up the sense of realism during the fight. It would make it so each ally death is not immediately permanent, but also ensures players would feel the sting of losing a unit for the rest of the fight. Maybe even two. Isn't that what classic mode members really want deep down anyway? There's no rating for this category, by the way. Just wanted to bring it all up. All right, moving on. Every Fire Emblem game has a wide variety of characters to choose from, and that's always been one of the series' greatest strengths. So many interesting people groups coming together to fight for a common purpose in your army. What really sets this Fire Emblem game apart, though, is just how many characters it has. Good gracious, there's just so many characters! And they all get thrown at you so quickly, in bunches of three. 
from the start of the game up until chapter 12, it's just like... Each time a new character is introduced into my precious, pristine, polished army, I need time. I need time to appreciate their short character arc and why they're leaving their families to join me. Time to meticulously rearrange my forces to fit them in, where there is already a very limited number of slots to fill. I need time to grow attached to them, and so do my other units so they can earn their supports. But this game don't give you no time. And for that, our rating of the characters is having only a 30 minute lunch break at an all you can eat buffet. Here's how it could have been better. Get rid of Clan, he's useless. <laughs> okay, okay, we're kidding. But let's suggest making some characters temporary green allies instead of fully fledged PCs. It would really unclog the roster a bit. Here's why this needs to happen. Number one, limited slots. You can only fight with about eight to 12 characters per battle, leaving more than two thirds of your army on the bench, twiddling their thumbs in the meantime. Plus, you can only bring the number of emblems equal to the number of playable characters each fight. Leaving behind emblems just feels like such a waste. Number two, power creep. Eventually, some characters are power crept into the void of uselessness. For example, let's compare Saline and clan stats real quick. Oh my gosh, that is gross. For two characters that fill a very similar role, it's not hard to see how one of them gets benched and then you forget they exist. And before it's too late, they're too weak to even fight the current level of enemies anymore. Number three, supports. Lots of characters equals lots of supports. It's just impossible to do them all in one playthrough. Or better yet, it is possible, but it takes so much tedious grinding that it doesn't even feel worth it anymore. And don't talk to me about the interactions with the emblems. We are not going to match each individual character with each individual emblem just to hear two sentences of dialogue. Ain't nobody got time for that. They really dropped a tier level with how supports are earned in this game too. It's such a small difference, but with a mammoth impact on how quickly you can earn support levels during combat. Here's what happened. In Fire Emblem Three Houses, units who were within their attack range of an enemy would earn supports when you are attacking or when the enemy is attacking you. Pretty solid, makes sense. However, in Engage, you can only earn support points in battle when you're standing next to each other and only when you're attacking. This really felt like a huge step backwards. So how do you make up for this? You let characters build bonds in the HQ, right? Sure. Here's your five limited options. Swimming, picking fruit, petting horses, complaining about food in the cafeteria, or annihilating each other in the sparring room. Fire Emblem supports are the lifeblood of what makes the character interaction interesting. It's a moment to take a few steps off the battlefield and dive deep into who these people are that are sacrificing their time, money, and energy to serve in your army. It's where you learn their hobbies, their interests, their family life, and it's where characters play off each other's shared interests. They talk about things they like, talk about things they hate, or... Day of pickles is unmatched. Is this not so? So... Did Fire Emblem and Gage have good depth to their supports? No, no it did not, but don't worry, we've got your back. After listening to all the supports, we've singled out each character's individual trope to save you some time. I'm sorry, Dragon Queen. I'm overshadowed by Celine. We love muscles. Truths foreseen. I can't read on age 16. It's time to duel. I make food. Everybody, I delude. I'm cute as tea brood. I am rude yet misconstrued. I'm a privileged pretty girl. My fairy tale life will soon unfurl. My products are in high demand. Alpacas, apple of my eye. My courage often comes in short supply. I'm the lead singer of my needy band. Love me some furry friends, that's novelty. Watch this, I will build a catapult using this debris. I come from royalty, endless currency. Everybody is obsessed with my body. I could cry. Father's War! We wage! I am going to stalk you party hard. Oh no! I'm a child in this conscription, but here's your herb prescription. We'll be friends from afar, a facade. Through my scars, I need you for my experiment. I live for endless merriment. My question is this. 
With so much potential with this myriad of character personalities, why did they feel the need to copy and paste their dialogue everywhere? And honestly, since the characters are all so one-dimensional anyway, it doesn't feel like there's much to explore about them. Our suggestion is this, have less overall supports and make them feel less forced, more natural. That way I'm not watching things on repeat. Our rating for the support system is having a conversation with a person who, even after three uh-huhs, five oh reallys, and ten head nods, still will not pick up on the sign that we're done talking to them. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> oh, and speaking of watching things on repeat, if I have to see one more character do this stupid hip roll thing, I'm going to explode! Time to bring it around down! Bring it around! Oh my gosh, quick editor guy, give me something else to talk about. Give me a new category, please! Ah, ah, good, thank you. Now we're talking the good talk. The fighting animations were stupefying in this game. This has been what Fire Emblem developers have been improving upon with each and every installment of the game. And Engage is no exception. Just look at that camera angle and that Engage attack. And ooh, that crit animation though. Yeah, I could watch this stuff until my eyes burn from the blue light exposure. They're so buttery smooth and satisfying. The first time I saw one of my characters parry an enemy that missed them and then strike back, mmm! Plus, you can walk around the battlefield and relive the scenery from a different point of view after each fight. Then there's the cutscenes. Oh boy, did this game go from 100 to 0 with its cutscenes. 100. Princess Ivy's epic character entry into Brodia Castle. Look at that descent in that majestic Ivern. 0. Seconds later, she ditches her Ivern and is casually chatting to the party. 100. Six emblems are stolen and resummoned under the power of the Fell Dragon at Illusia Castle. 0. The characters run 200 feet away and talk about their regrets with zero emotional display whatsoever. Nintendo must have blown through their animation budget with some of these moments because it can just be so jarring removing you from the intensity of the fight when you go back and forth like this. Our quick fix, do it all or nothing Nintendo. Either give us some good quality dialogue where the characters actually have more than one hand gesture when they talk, or just give us the old fashioned character text boxes. Going back and forth is a struggle. Oh and speaking of struggles, it is so hard to take this game seriously. At no point was it possible for me to remember we're facing down a demonic dragon when candy cane hair is on the screen. And I understand not everyone wants to talk shop all the time about warfare outside of battle, but is it really necessary to focus on how cute someone is during every support conversation? I'm looking at you, Rosado, with your Trixie Tang vibes. Tell me I'm pretty! Tell me I'm pretty! Tell me I'm pretty! You're pretty? <laughs> Say it again! They really channeled their inner weeaboo with some of these characters. This is where Fire Emblem Anime Feizu gets its name. Don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on the art style. We're huge fans of Wind Waker and similar genres with bright coloring and such, but the combination of how they look and how they talk does not make me think continental warfare. Which writer thought this conversation needed to be a thing? This army's too pretty. It's not right. How am I supposed to be the cutest when the competition is this gorgeous? Whatever. The characters look fine. At least they gave some proper glow-ups to all the emblem characters. Looking good, Marth. Sigurd, yeah, my man. Celica, heck yeah. Corin, my favorite. Well, there's an expansion pass too? Edelgard only cost $5? Sold. Oh, and only $60 for Azura? Done. Three payments of $29.99 for Hello Professor, guard from three houses? Take my money. A six month lease on my car for Titania? Easy peasy. Oh, and tell you what, I'll pay you in gold to keep Cyril out of this game. Because, I mean, who needs money anymore, right? Who, who makes completed games anymore? Screw that. Let's market our DLC before the game is even released. Oh, and you know what? Releasing games is stupid. Let's do DLC only. And make people pay it in person as they crawl upon their hands and knees up to our Nintendo Monopoly. Oh, shoot. The Death Knight's going to be an emblem? Take my money.